Well, hi there. So in this video, we're going to do a little bit of practice with the total revenue test of elasticity, and we're going to practice price elasticity of supply. So let's get started. So this first problem says that demand for bottled water is relatively elastic and suppliers reduce their costs by using more recycled materials. And thus we can expect higher or lower prices, and higher or lower revenue. Now, this is, this is a tricky one because the first thing they're telling us that it's relatively elastic is gonna help us understanding the revenue. But here we're gonna find out what's gonna happen to that price. So if we know that costs are going down, then I actually know that supply is gonna increase. And because of that, I know that price is gonna fall. Now, if I know that price is falling and that I am relatively elastic, kind of doing your stretch all the way out, right? Elastic, you're stretched out, the price is going down. So that makes the total revenue going up. So we would say that we would expect lower prices and higher revenue as a consequence of that, um, that change. Severe drought damages a large portion of peanut crops if peanut farmers' revenues increase. So it's telling you here, revenues are going up at the same time, though, that we had something that damaged the portion of the peanut crop. So the supply decreased and we know that the price went up at that point, right? When the drought damaged it, so prices had to rise. If we know that revenues are rising and price is rising, we're moving in the same direction, we know that we must be relatively inelastic. Three, demand for brand name cereal is highly elastic. So that's telling us this production problems reduce the supply. So I'd say supply decreases and the price is going to go up. And now it's telling us elastic price goes up. Well, that's going to mean that we are in, um, we're going to see the revenues, right? Price goes up. We're in the elastic range. We're going to see the revenues go down, right? They move opposite each other. It's a little hard for me to do this when I'm like really, really tiny in the corner here. Um, but so if we know price is rising, then I know that the revenue earned is going to actually fall. Now, and again, that's because I know that it's elastic. Number four, university raises the fees and tuition. So I know right there, prices are rising. And then it says it's going to increase the revenue if the demand is. And so here, increase the revenue would be only true if the demand is inelastic, right? So it's kind of they're moving the same way. Grocery store raises prices on generic food. So we're going to say prices go up, sees its revenue go up. If I know they're moving the same direction, then I know that they must be relatively inelastic. So again, it's a remembering testing yourself of the relationship between price and total revenue and remembering the elastic and elastic phenomenon. Number six, calculate the price elasticity of supply, then write whether it's elastic or inelastic. And again, these are going to be relatively, right? They're probably not going to be perfect, although we might see one in here that is. Um, but usually when we're seeing a question like that, it's saying like relatively elastic or relatively inelastic. Corn prices rise 20% and the quantity produced goes up 40. Well, so it's 40 over 20 is equal to two. And so we would say 2.0. Um, and how did I know that? Well, I always put the dollar amount in the denominator, right? So the 20 went the down part of the fraction. If it's greater than one, then I know it's relatively elastic. And in this case, it's relatively elastic supply because it's, it's two. Soccer tickets rise from 100 to 200, 250. Sales remain the same. Well, if I know that sales remained the same, right? The quantity of sales, we could say, um, then I actually know that it's perfectly inelastic and then it's zero, right? So it's actually a perfectly inelastic one because there is no change in the quantity as a result of that 50% increase in the ticket price. C, Uber drivers are C, a pay cut by five, receive 4% fewer driver applications. This is tricky because it requires you to think about like what's the quantity and what's the price. And what they're saying here is that the quantity of drivers who are willing to work is going to be going down by 4% when they cut the price they're willing to pay by 5%, right? So we're kind of looking at it as 4% over 5%, that is 0.8. And so we're gonna say that it's relatively inelastic. Now, uh, this one is relative, that one actually is perfect. So that B is perfectly inelastic, C is just relative. D, Starbucks sales fall by six when they raise prices by eight. And again, we're gonna say quantity for that sales, what that refers to. And so we'll say eight, oops, eight. And then our numerator is six. And so that's 0.75, that's gonna be inelastic. Now, and we'll do number seven. Katie's demand for chocolate bars is perfectly inelastic at a quantity of one per week. Mm -hmm. Maximiliano, that's a fun name, I love that. Um, he doesn't go by Max, will consume three chocolate bars per week when the price is dollar, it consume four when it's 50 cents. Katie and Maximiliano are the only consumers Calculate the price elasticity you demand and indicate whether it's inelastic or elastic. So this one's a little tricky, but we know that we've got some data. If we said price, right? We've got price and we've got quantity. Well, if the price is 50 cents, uh, then we also know that Katie is gonna buy that, right, regardless. She's gonna buy one. 
And if it's 50 cents, we know that Maximiliano is going to buy four. So three plus one, or sorry, four plus one is uh, five. So we know that the quantity demanded, whoops, I just wrote quantity, quantity, quantity demanded is five at 50 cents. At one dollar, well, Katie's still buying one. Katie's still buying the one and Max is buying three. So there's four. So when the price goes from 50 cents to a dollar, quantity demand goes from five to four. So we're going to do the percent change in the quantity over the percent change in the price. And we know that, right, new value minus the old value over the old value is going to be 0.5 over 0.5. So that's actually a 100% increase in price. And what happened to quantity demanded? Well, the new value was the four, right, the four. So four minus five over five is one fifth. One fifth is 20%, 20%. And so we would say that the price elasticity of demand in indicating here, whether it's inelastic or elastic is 0.2, because we usually give them as an absolute value, and that is less than one, so it is inelastic, right? So a little bit of a trickier one here because we actually had to do some percent changes, but once you kind of notice 50 to 100, that's a 100% increase, five to four is a 20% decrease, um, they're really not too bad. Number eight, what's the most elastic point of the demand curve, which is the most inelastic point? And when we learned this, we talked about how E comes before I. And in fact, as we go farther up this demand curve, they become more elastic. As we go farther down, it becomes more inelastic. So the most elastic is point Z, and the most inelastic is point X. Uh, that'll do it for us. I'll see you next time. Yeah.